Um, I'm going to go ahead and start here. Um, as usual, I thought I'd you know, go over the, uh, get, get everybody started on the assignment 12, maybe talk a little bit about the dictionaries and hashing in general. Um, there were some good uh, lecture videos this week on stuff and, and a lot of good uh, reading materials. So hopefully everybody's uh, you know reading through uh, all those and, and, and using all the resources. Um, so as usual, um, let me go through the steps to get started here. I haven't even accepted the assignment yet. So let me, um, let me copy that link and go ahead and uh, get started on the assignment 12 here. So, so yeah, let's see, we got that. All right. Um, and um, as usual, I'm, I'm going to actually, I've done this for most of these videos, or at least for the first one on Tuesday, but I'm going to go through the checklist. Um, so we just accepted the assignment, um, and um, so we need to clone the repository. I already copied the link there, so paste in our link for assignment 12 repository. Uh, put that into our sync um, assignment subdirectory locally here. And I'll go ahead and open that up. And then um, we should go ahead and configure the project as usual. So let's open up a terminal. run dot slash configure to configure it. So that should give us our um, uh, dot CLang format and our dot um, um, VS code uh, folder for all the configuration things. Um, let's try and build and run the project and create our tasks here. So, So I'll go ahead and open up the test file here, close off my terminal, uh, do a clean, control shift one, control shift two, do a make all. There's lots of files in this one, so um, you have to make certain that everything runs, or everything compiles cleanly, make certain you get your terminal back, and then control shift three should run. Um, and there are some tests, not too many, but uh, eight test assertions that are uncommon initially, so some tests are running. Um, and then I guess we could go ahead and create our issue one if we wanted to. Uh, there we go. So now we should have our pull request up. And we have our issue one created. Let's go ahead and link that to the pull request here. All right. Um, and we're pretty much like good to go. One, one thing, um, um, there's there is a lot of use of uh, the uh, LaTeX uh, notation here. So you, maybe you can read it, but this might be a good one to actually use the PDF here so that uh, you know, to make certain that you're seeing the, the correct notation on these things. I'm going to go ahead and open up the uh, PDF for that file that I just um, cloned in my repository here. So, and use that when we're reading through the assignment here. So, all right. Um, so for this assignment, um, we're going to be implementing a um, um, dictionary interface, uh, and we're going to be using hashing to implement the dictionary. So um, maybe before I, I jump into this, um, um, there's one or two things that um, that I kind of wanted to um, maybe talk about a, a bit, right? So for one thing, I mean, uh, we're, we're looking through dictionaries and hashing uh, in one unit here, but they're really kind of separate things. So a dictionary is really an abstract API. And we've, you've already, we've already kind of 
introduce the concept of dictionary. Dictionary is really just the idea of a key value pair, okay? And then the, the API for a dictionary, if you look at it, so in our assignment, we've got the, the dictionary in this assignment, uh, we've got a dictionary um, class defined um, in the dictionary.hpp file here, right? Uh, again, this is just an abstract base class, so it's got some personal functions that actually we have to um, actually, um, um, as usual, you're going to be implementing these, um, but you have to uncomment these and implement them. Um, so you're going to be, we're, we're, in our assignment, we're going to be implementing a hash dictionary, which is a particular implementation of the dictionary API using a hash table underneath right and so the basic things you want to do for a dictionary is you want to be able to insert a key value pair into the dictionary you want to search for a key and it returns the the the, the value um associated with that key and you want to re remove the key okay so we actually already um did that same api for the tree last week okay so you can use a tree to implement a dictionary and in fact you know, if we were building um, a library like the standard template library from scratch, we might have different implementations of the dictionary API where, where we might use a binary tree or a more general tree as one implementation. So we would have like a tree dictionary um, and a hash dictionary. And we could use like, for example, a list, just a plain list for that um, to implement a dictionary, right? Um, and um, I, I think, I might, I might be um, um, going, repeating some of the stuff that I talked about in the lecture videos, right? But, but if you think about it, so for our, in this assignment, we've got the dictionary. Which is our abstract base class here, right? That, that defines the API. So we use a little bit of UL, UML um, notation here. So the API for the dictionary is basically the insert, the insert method, uh, the find method. So insert a key value pair, uh, find by the key. find a key and it returns the value um, and then remove or delete. We call it remove in this API. So remove the key from the, um, uh, the dictionary, okay? So there's different ways that we can implement the dictionary. And in this assignment, we're implementing it as a hash table, right? So by inheritance, this, this is our abstract based class. So by inheritance, We're implementing a hash dictionary, which implements those, and it uses a an array that we organize and access as a hash table, right? Which is part of what we talk about um, in the materials this uh, for this unit. Now we could have implemented our binary tree. Uh, we we could have used the binary tree to implement the dictionary API. And in fact, we did because the binary tree we have the same methods like the insert, find, and remove. Um, so we could stick the binary tree that you did in the last unit in here. And sorry for my writing there, but I'll call that a tree dictionary. So, so we could maybe call that a, a, a tree dictionary that we're putting in here. Um, and there's other ways that we can implement the basic dictionary API or the basic uh, map uh, API. Okay, so, so in, in computer science and in other programming languages, you'll see dictionaries referred to a, using a couple of different names. So besides a dictionary, sometimes it's called a map, right? Um, and, and in the standard template library, that's what it's called. So if C++ has a standard template library, it, it calls a map. That's basically a dictionary concept here. Um, sometimes you'll just see this called key value pair. Um, 
right? So although in this assignment, we've got both the dictionary and we've also got a uh, key value pair class as well. So um, I'll talk about that in a second. Um, but anyway, we, we can implement this in different ways. And, and I just wanted to say, like I said, I, I think I maybe mentioned this in the lecture videos. Um, so I can also implement this as a list, okay? So, so here's where um, um, using the idea of algorithmic complexity, uh, we can compare these different implementations, right? So uh, let, let's, let's say, so for the tree that we did last week, whenever you insert a new value into the tree, um, remember to, to insert, you have to first search to find a, a, a null leaf node for the location to insert it into a binary tree, but we're using a binary tree here, right? So that's always going to be a, a log it. Log two of n to do the insert, right? Uh, this up again. So, so I'm just going to compare these three different ways of doing this, right? Uh, so we, we insert, find, and and remove. Okay, so for, for the tree, they're all O, o log in. Okay, so if you want to find a value, again, you're going to be doing the same basic thing and becomes log in to either find the value or determine that the value is not currently in our um, key value pair mapping or, or dictionary, right? Right, so, so that was that was what we looked at last week. And so for all these three basic operations for uh, the tree, it's always gonna be uh, log in in the, the the average case and the worst case, right? It'll always be that, right? So that, that's kind of a nice property of a tree. So, so that um, um, you're always guaranteed that it's not, not, never going to take any longer than log in to do the operations you need to insert new values in them or, 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 or retrieve them from your tree structure. Um, now, for the list, it's a little bit different. It depends on. Um, I mean, you could try and keep the list sorted. So then you could do a binary search to do the find, right? Things like that. So let, let's just say though, that we're not doing anything fancy. Whenever we insert, we're just inserting the value onto the input list, right? So in that case, insert is constant time. Uh, so to insert a new key value pair, you can just insert it to the end of the list. Like if you're using an array, so it becomes 01 or constant time for the insert which is better than, than uh, the insert for the, uh, the tree, right? But to do the search and the remove, to do the search, uh, I have to, to, to linearly search if I don't keep the list sorted or anything. So that's O in. And the thing to keep in mind is that login is really much, grows much, much slower than linear time. In fact, for, for many purposes, Login is, is much closer to like a constant time than it is to linear, right? So, so when n becomes really big, like billions or trillions, this is still essentially very small. Whereas at linear time uh, becomes expensive when you're talking uh, like the number of items in your dictionary is billions or trillions of items that you have to search through. Okay, so you, you really can't run like an Amazon if you if you use a list to retrieve um, your, your values based on a key or an index like this, right? You have to do something else. This is too expensive. It would take too much time uh, to search. Uh, and likewise for a list to remove the item, uh, if you're using an array, um, so I'm mostly thinking of this as an array. If you use a linked list, it would also be 01. 
and it would be the O-N to search it, whether you use an array or a list. Uh, removal also would be O-N. So if it's a linked list, you'd have to search for the node and remove it. And potentially it could be the very last node they did end up removing. Or if it's an array, you have to search for the node to remove and then do some shifting as well. So, so the list is, is, is kind of bad, right? Um, um, in that comparison with like a tree to implement your basic key value pair, your basic dictionary API. Yeah. Now, as we talked about um, in our unit this week, the hash table seems a little bit magical. It's actually constant time to insert to find the value and to remove the value. But there's some caveats with that, right? So, so hashing can be a very um, uh, you know, it, it, so it, can, it can have very good performance, uh, but this is kind of the average case. So unfortunately, this, this can devolve to linear time, okay? So for example, um, if you have a lot of collisions, uh, whether you use an open or closed hashing that I'll talk about um, in, in a little bit here, but uh, if, so in kind of the average case, you, you might only have one or two collisions. So, so you only have one or two comparisons to find the value. But in the worst case, you could end up with a very long number of collisions close to the number of items in, in the list. Okay, so, so this is kind of the average case. But in the worst case, these can all kind of devolve down to an O in. Uh, like fine. So if I have lots of collisions, uh, I could potentially have O in, right? Same for insert for the same kind of reasons, number of collisions. Although another thing for insert, um, you can uh, I'll talk about this in a bit. You can you can try and make it very unlikely that you have lots of collisions by keeping your hash table relatively empty if you're doing closed hashing. But um, in that case, occasionally you know it's usually constant time on average. But at some time, if your table becomes kind of full, you have to grow the table. So, so again, for, for that, the worst case, when you grow the table, you have to allocate a new array and then copy all the values so it becomes O in in the worst case. Right. So anyway, that, that's kind of the trade off between a hash table and a tree. Okay, so in some cases, in, in some, like if you're building a real time system, because in the worst case, you can occasionally have to grow your table, or you might end up having a long, uh, by chance, having a long chain of collisions, which degrades performance. So, so, so the performance can be uh, more varied for a hash table. I mean, it's always going to be log in in the worst case for a tree, right? Oh, it, it, oh I should say for a balanced tree. So, um, so I've been a bit unfair to hash table. So we, we talked about this last week a little bit as well, because you're, if, if you're not doing anything special to keep your tree balanced, um, your average case, you expect it to be log in, but your worst case um, can devolve to, uh, to O of N for all these operations for a tree as well. So to be fair, unless we're, we're doing the work to keep the tree balanced, um, uh, you also have the same problem for the tree that it, it can become unbalanced and you have uh, O-N performance for finds and inserts, right? Um, but so for both of these, for both of these, you can avoid the worst case performance by doing some extra work to create to keep the tree balanced. Uh, and you can mostly avoid having long chains of collisions by managing the hash table correctly, by keeping it relatively empty if you're using closed hashing, 
or by using open hashing and using a good hash function that, that makes certain that you don't have lots of collisions, lots of, of hashes hashing to the same key location. Right. Uh, anyway, so, so some of that stuff is discussed in the, the textbook reading materials um, and in my lecture videos for this week. Um, Oh, just a second. Let me, um, I've been having problems. Let me just make certain that my audio is still good here. So, um, yeah, okay. Yeah, that's good. All right. Um, so let's, let's get back and talk about the assignment. Um, So we're going to be implementing a, a closed hashing uh, scheme, okay? Um, so, um, and, and the first task we're going to be doing is implementing uh, the probe and hash functions for a closed hashing scheme. And, and we're going to be using um, um, a, a quadratic probe for this. So, so we're not going to be using just a simple probe where we, if we have a collision, then we check the next index and then the next index after that till we resolve the collision. We use a more complex sequence for the, 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 uh, the, the probe um, sequence, okay? So um, let me talk a little bit about that then real quickly, okay? So basically, Basic difference between closed and open hashing is this. Okay, so for um, for closed versus open hashing. Okay, so for open hashing, uh, we're going to make use a combination of um, an array and linked list to do the hashing. Okay, so for open hashing. We have an array that, that we hash our key into to get the index that we're going to first look at. All right, so we'll have a hash we'll have a, a, a regular array of size n. And whatever the key is that we're using, we'll hash that key. And that, that will hash into an index from zero to n. And then we will look at the item in the array to see if we find the item, right? And collisions are resolved by then keeping a linked list of, of items. So if, if two or more items hash to the same index, so that, that's what, what a collision is. So let's say we have uh, two items that hash to index two. We'll have the first value, we'll end up maintaining a linked list. So we'll have to have an array of nodes. Uh, and then each one of these nodes, if there's a collision, uh, we will add on to the linked list, right? So um, if we have two values, two, two keys that, that hash to the same index two, uh, we will have to search through the linked list. You know, so if, if the, the key we're looking for, um, so, so when we're doing a find, uh, we would first hash our key and we would find, we would see that it goes to index two, then we'd have to compare those. So is the, the, the value in this node equal to the key that we're searching for? If it is, then we found it and we return that value. If it's not, we have to search through the linked list, right? So if we have more than, than two items colliding, that linked list will go on, right? And again, in the worst case, if you have a bad hash function, um, and everything is mapping to the same index. So in the worst case, you could end up just having a linked list of all the values where all the keys hash to that same value, right? Uh, but again, if, if you're using a good hash function, that shouldn't occur. So a good hash function will hash the, the keys evenly 
across your array of indexes. So that's open hash table. A closed hash table, which is what we're doing for this assignment, uses an array, the same type of array. An array of size n. And, and we hash the key to get an index to check in the array. But the way we handle collisions um, is that we, we, we probe the table, OK? So let's say. Let's say again that um, we're doing a find for a key and it hashes to index two. So what, what we would do, we would check the, the key that's currently in index two. And if it's equal to the key that we're searching for, then, then we succeeded and we would return its value. If it's not for closed hashing, for a simple closed hashing, we would use a simple, we would increment the index, right? So if we don't find it at index two, our first key location, we would increment to index three and search there and then four. And by we, we keep doing that until we either find an empty slot, which means that our search failed, or we found the key that we were trying to search for, right? And then, um, what we're doing, though, in our assignment is we're not using um, just a simple sequential probe sequence. We're using a quadratic probe sequence, right? So if I can switch back real quickly. Um, um, so for our probe function, um, we use this um, equation, right, for our to calculate the offset, right? So we're going to be adding the offset to the initial uh, hash index that, that the hash function um, gives us, okay? So, and, and the probe index should start at zero, okay? So, um, So we're, we're, we're going to be using a one for the C1 constant. Um, and then um, one for C, no, two for C2 and two for C3. So, so it's, so, so it's a one times the probe index squared uh, plus two times the probe index. plus uh, another two, okay? So basically, um, basically, we start off with, um, we first are gonna hash the key and that will give us the initial index. So again, let's say the hash goes to index two, right? Uh, but then um, we're all, we also need to add in the probe offset, right? So we start with a, a probe index of zero. So when, when, when I is zero, um, you know, you, you plug in uh, the, the, the probe index uh, into the, the probe function. So that we, we pass in the index to the probe function and it returns the offset that you need to add to the initial hash key. So when it's when it's zero for this function, we get zero, one times zero squared plus two times zero plus two. So, uh, so for index zero, the offset is two, right? And so when index is one, we get the one times one squared plus two times one plus two. So that's a five. All right. And when, when the index is, is two, we get one times two squares, or so one times four plus two times two, which is four plus two. So uh, 10. And so on. Right. And, and again, remember so basically, what we need to do when we're using closed hashing 
we, we first compute the index using the hash function, like two in my example. Then we compute the offset starting at index zero, but that's going to have an offset too. So the very first place that we're going to look in that case is actually going to be two plus two. So we're going to look at index four, uh, if, like we're doing a five, right? So at index four, uh, if we're searching for a particular key, we would look for um, that key. If we don't find it, then we're going to probe to uh, index one. So we get add two plus five. So then we're going to look at index seven, right? And all of these, uh, I haven't mentioned yet, but all of these we have to wrap around, right? So if the hash table is currently of size n, um, if, if we take the hash plus the offset, that goes beyond the end of the table, you have to wrap it back around um, to the front. All right. So that, that's kind of what the probe and the hash does. Um, oh, and for the hash, um, the hash function that we're using here. Um, is also described in task one here. Um, we're using the, the mid square hashing function. Okay, so um, so um, we'll give an algorithm here. So, so I'll talk about that. But basically, the, the mid square um, hashing function is um, uh, we, we should start by squaring the key. Um, but, uh, but yeah, like I say here, don't use the um, C math uh, power function to, to square the value. Just multiply the key times itself to square it. Um, and then we want to get just the middle bits, right? So if, if we have a 32-bit integer, uh, we want the middle 16 bits. So there's different ways we could do this, but I describe that we use a little bit of um, uh, bitwise operators. So if you do the key ended by a pattern like that, that will uh, zero out the topmost eight bits, right? So for uh, for a hexadecimal um, constant string here, each digit represents four bits. So if you do an and with this, we're, we're anding the top eight bits by zero, which zeroes out the top eight bits, but we keep the bottom um, 24 bits to be whatever the original values are. And then if we shift right by eight bits, so doing a key, so this, this is the shift, logical shift, bitwise shifting operator. If we shift right by eight bits, um, that will shift off the least significant eight bits and you'll end up with just the middle 16 bits by doing that algorithm. Um, okay. So let's let's show kind of get getting started with that. All right. So so both of these need to be added into the hash dictionary, but these are private methods, so these aren't part of the dictionary um, base class um, API probe and hash. Right. So right. If if you're implementing the binary tree. Uh, dictionary, you wouldn't you have a probe and hash function, you would have the private functions like we have last unit to, to do the, the recursive um, um, searching through the tree, right? But here we're going to make a probe and hash be private functions for the hash function. So we can, we can start by um, um, uncommenting our task one tests. So I think there's two. Um, there's two unit tests for for the uh, task one because one of them tests the hash function. Um, and one tests the, the, the probe function. So the first one is just of the probe function. Right. Oh, and like I showed uh, here on, on the whiteboard, you know, so if, when you if you use the correct values for our quadratic probe, um, the, a probe index of zero should return two, probe index of one should return five, probe index of two should return two, three of 17, so on. So this gives you the basic 
and a probe index of one, two, three, four, five should return that. Right? So we don't mod the, the returned offset by the table size. That needs to be done by the hash function. Okay. Um, so anyway, let, let's let's uncomment that. Um, and let's, um, um, so, so probe should take, um, an ID um, a key ID um, so we're using integers as our um, uh, keys and then employees as our value for this test here right so we actually we actually don't use the key in the probe so some some types of complex probing sequences will modify the probe sequence based on the key here we're not doing that we're, we're just um, simply um, doing, um, you know, calculating this quadratic offset based on the index, the, the probe index, right? Uh, but but we left that as part of the API. This, this is mentioned in the, the Schaffer textbook, in case we wanted to implement a different probing method that you did need the, the key to calculate the offset for the probe. All right. Um, so for probe, we'd have to add, and this returns um, an integer offset, okay? So uh, we'd be adding our probe to the um, hash dictionary.hpp. Um, this needs to be the probe and, and the hash should be private methods. Um, So I'll just put it down here. Um, so in this case, like probe returns an offset and it takes um, a key. So, so our, our hash dictionary is templatized on the key value, right? So the, the, the first thing is actually a key. So in our, in our test, uh, we're using integers for the keys, right? So, so we're passing in an integer, but, but, but we're actually templatizing um, on, on this, so, so the ID is a key, but the the second value is is um, the the probe index. So that's an actual integer, right? Um, and in this case, the, the probe and also the hash function shouldn't be modifying the class. So they, they, they could be declared as constant member functions, although it's a, it's a constant private member function. But that should be what, what the, the signature looks like for that. Um, and uh, maybe I'll jump over to the, to the hash real quickly. So for the, the oops, for the hash function, uh, not, uh, um, I changed my mind. Let's let's go ahead and let, let's get this to compile and run. So um, let's add in a stub function that just returns zero um, as the offset here into the hash dictionary dot cpp. Um, I want to kind of put this after my grows uh, dictionary, grow hash dictionary here. So in this case, uh, We want to calculate and return calculate and return the uh, probe offset 
using a quadratic probe uh, function, okay? So um, I think I, I mentioned in the description, um, maybe like C1, C2, and C3, the, the parameters for the quadratic probe we're using ought to be class constants or even maybe even better, um, we ought to make these like uh, parameters so that when you create a hash dictionary, you can specify what the parameters are that you want to use for the, the quadratic uh, probe sequence. But um, we were using what? Um, um, one, two, two for these these values uh, here. So, okay. and uh, like I said, I'm just going to return zero again. And then um, we need to fix up our signature here. So, um, um, like this member function here, um, it's a template member function on the key value. And um, like um, this member function here, it's a member of the hash dictionary class. This probe function. All right, and um, that should be it. So that should be enough to actually compile and run unless I miss something here. To compile and run these tests, but they won't pass because we're just returning zero in our stub function here. But let's go ahead and try it. So I'll do a clean. And build. Um, um, and I, I had uh, kind of prematurely uncommented the um, API functions, and I haven't implemented those yet, so I need to comment those back out until we get to task two and beyond, where we're starting, where we want to start doing those, um, or else we'll get these these error messages about the pure virtual functions. So um, comment those back out. Um, oh, um, um, yeah, I declared these variables, but I didn't use them yet. So um, I am, or you do need to use them, but I'm not going to show you the implementation of this, although it should be pretty simple. You know, I've given you everything. All you have to do is, is use that quadratic function then to um, calculate the offset and return it, right? So using these values for C1, C2, and C3. But um, comment those back out, though, so we don't uh, have errors about unused variables. Um, and there we go. So it compiled. And then we should be running the test, but now we're not going to be passing. Um, and our first failing test is going to be that one um, on line 81. Because you know we're not returning the correct um, offset when, for the probe index of zero. All right, and then the, the uh, let's, let's just work on the signature for the hash function as well. So the second test, and then there's some more tests for task one that test um, the hash function for different table sizes or other things. So, um, so you should make sure, you, yeah, um, once you get probe and hash working, um, uh, make sure you uncomment all of the, the unit tests for task one, right? There's, I guess there's three of them. So there's, there's one more after this. So um, our hash takes a key. So, so it takes that ID, it takes a key as input um, and it returns um, an integer value, which is gonna be an index um, into our table um, and this value should be um, a value between zero and the current hash table size, right? So if the hash table size is seven um, and, we, and we hash on the key, we should get values between zero and six inclusive, kind of what we're doing here, right? So one of the things, one of the last steps that I 
uh, mentioned, uh, kind of, I didn't mention, but, um, you know, so after you square it and get the middle bits, you do also have to uh, mod it um, to get it within the, the allocation size. So, so you have to mod it or do an if it's greater than allocation size, um, 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 wrap it around. So it's between zero and allocation size minus one. So, um, yeah, I mean, our, our, our hash function looks similar. It just takes a key and it returns an integer, though. Okay. So we have a similar. Um, pretty similar signature to the probe. Um, and, and, and again, it doesn't really modify anything in the dictionary, it just does a calculation. So it can also be constant, right? So, but uh, anyway, it's basically almost the same signature, but we just pass in the key. Right? In this case, though, you're using the key. So you're going to be using that key to square it, find the middle bits. You can assume that the key is, is integer like. So, um, we kind of, in this assignment, I kind of skipped over some of the complications. So like if you were using like a, a string like key, so a key that was like a, a, an employee name or something like that, you would have to implement the, the hash function, change the name to here, uh, differently, right? So, you, and you might have to do some introspection to figure out, you know, is the key, can I treat it kind of like an integer? Or do we have to treat it more like a string and do some other kind of a calculation, right? We're, we're mostly passing over that complication and we're just expecting that the keys are integer-like um, and you can do things like multiply them together and do bitwise operations um, on the keys here. Um, oh, I, I just realized I didn't finish off my um, documentation, uh, or I skipped over that too. So um, I just gave the description. Uh, I, I do, I'm, I'm going to fill this out because I'm basically going to copy and paste this for my um, documentation for the hash here. So. Um, This key is actually unused for a quadratic probe uh, sequence. And this is just an index always starting at zero. Um, you know, whether it was our first probe or the second, or the, the zeroth probe, first probe, second probe, so and we do start at zero. and it returns the calculated probe offset in this case, all right? So, um, so we can make a hash um, a stub function as well, just to get it to compile and run. Uh, but we have to templatize the function and we have to add it to the um, Hash dictionary class, right? And again, don't skip over doing your documentation. Here we're calculating and returning the initial hash key index um, using a mid square hashing function, right? We just got the key and it returns the calculated um, hash key. Right. 
So anyway, but that again should be enough to hopefully compile the test that I just um, commented. Although you know we're not returning the correct initial hash index yet. So but let's make sure it compiles. Right, so it compiles and runs um, with those stubs that I just gave you. Um, but yeah, we're we're, face, we're failing the probe um, tests, and we should be failing the hash test. And we're always returning zero instead of the correct initial hash key. All right, um, and then um, I'm not going to go into any more details further on the rest of the tasks. Well, I'll talk in more details about the other tasks uh, later on. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, on Thursday for our, our next help session. So that should be enough to get you started. So um, there are um, five tasks. Basically, after that, uh, after task one, um, there, there's still some more private methods. Uh, so a, a method called probe for available slot and probe for key slot. Um, so these are going to be used by the actual public API methods, uh, insert. So the last three are to implement the insert, find, and remove. So all of these three use uh, these methods for task two. And these methods for task two basically use the hash and the probe method from task one. Right? The difference between these is one of these is basically going to be used um, for like the insert. So this is going to be uh, 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 doing a, a probe sequence to find an empty uh, key slot and returning that empty key slot so you can insert the value. And the other one is going to be more used for the find um, and remove. Um, so in this case, you're going to be uh, using the probe sequence uh, and searching for a particular key for the probe for key slot. Okay. And then finally, you know, task three, four, and five implement the three API methods. So for these, you're gonna you're gonna uncomment the API method in the dictionary class, um, and then implement it in the hash dictionary class. And all of these should be reusing the probe for key slot um, uh, and or the the, the probe for uh, the, those those two from task two. So so these the the other three use one or both of these methods to implement them. And, and the, the algorithm is described, um, you know, for insert, um, for find, um, and remove, all right? Um, okay, so um, that's it for this uh, help session. Uh, if you have questions about that, uh, keep sending me emails. I'll be happy to answer stuff as you're working on these. Um, I'll go ahead and post this video and I will see you guys later then.